like 9 30 and so what i want to do right now is i want to write an abstract um, for a conference that i want to submit to apply to some research emails and then i'm kind of debating whether or not i want to do a full length exam for usmle or i want to just do some practice question blocks uh, just because tomorrow I, my time is broken up, so I don't really have a full date either. Um, but we'll see. I think I'll see how I feel after I do some research first. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to listen to some music. So I used to just listen to a whole bunch of different pop songs, EDM. I had some Britney. <laughs> All sorts of soundtracks and a lot of high energy music, actually. Um, I don't do the classical instrumental thing, it doesn't really work for me, um, so yeah, I do that, uh, but then when I'm doing, like, really hard, intense focus, um, such as when I'm doing UL blocks, I like to listen to Lush Lo-Fi, it's really nice and calm, it's like a Spotify pre-list, it's pretty good. I also do have a, uh, instrumental study music playlist that I used to use more, but I actually like this Lush Lo-Fi more lately. that I mean trying not to do during quarantine like I totally did yesterday <laughs> is I totally so I had my first lunch at 10 o'clock so I woke up at 6 30 had my first lunch at 10 o'clock then I had a second lunch at two o'clock and then I have dinner some days I ended up maybe I'll just have one lunch but then I'll have two dinners so yeah I eat a lot <laughs> and so my second lunch I don't just mean like a sandwich I usually had like just had straight up rice and then a second lunch I had one ton soup and then i have like rice so yeah i eat maybe more than i should be eating um so that's why today for first lunch i'm just having some corn and um, protein so uh, not that i'm afraid of like weight gain uh, just more of making sure i'm not overeating uh, when food is not like don't want to like when food is going to maybe be in limited supply so try not to do that what I usually do during my breaks nowadays that I'm home, I just like to put away dishes, do some dishes, reorganize the kitchen, and try to be a little bit productive or you know laundry and that kind of stuff. So um, when I was in elementary school, we had this thing where um, you can volunteer to like serve lunch to other students, and then you get like lunch for that week that you're working. Um, that was in grade six, grade five to seven, six to seven, anyways did it with my friends and it was really good it was really fun and you like have a little community of everyone else who does it um but yeah there was like there was a bit of a kind of like an admin change and so there was some admin as well as some students that were really disrespectful towards um lunch like lunch workers um including student volunteers like i was and so i really yeah i didn't like that it was like um looking down on um looking down on us and so I have a lot of respect for people who work in cafeterias, food industry, ser basically service like because of that like from a young age because like it's hard work it's like pretty gross like especially when I was like on cleaning duty um like on a pasta day like oof it's really gross um but I distinctly remember there is this there was this admin person who insisted that we rinse the um milk cups in water like hand hand do them and they did give us like things like gloves and stuff and so she wanted us to do it by hand into this water that was like greasy and oily with like pasta sauce and then also like reach in and like grab things and it was just like i think it's important to remember that everyone even service workers are human um you know not just even it's like they are human just as everyone else is and so just because um maybe we're not in a higher level position like this person was it doesn't mean that things that are 
like gross to most people or not gross to other people. So um, I think you know, kind of considering the feelings of everyone who's involved um, is really important. Like, um, and then just like really thinking, is that necessary? Is there a way around it? Or, you know, if that really was necessary, it wasn't. But if, you know, if that was necessary to rinse out those containers, like if providing gloves and that kind of thing is, um, I think, a really good idea. And it, it was a bit of like a power abuse. And so the actual lady who ran the um, the food program was super nice. Her name is Rose. Amazing lady. Like, great food. Um, and she was kind. And that was a type of leadership that I wanted to emulate. That was one about like compassion and kindness and looking out for her staff. Whereas um, the other one taught me what I don't want to be as a leader. And so I mean that was still a valuable experience. Uh, but yeah, sometimes that gave me a bit of a feeling towards washing dishes. And so I'm just thinking that like I think after that I really thought about when I grow up I want to be in that position, in that position of of leadership where I'm gonna make decisions while thinking about these people and I'm not going to be that kind of leader and so it, I mean it, I guess it's not like I hate it it just gives me that sense of determination again that I want to be living life and being a good leader in the right ways so respect respect all your service workers that's definitely my pet peeve if I'm with someone at a restaurant and they're really disrespectful towards a server or any other staff um, I really don't like that because that's not cool because you need to be respectful to everybody no matter what they, you know, it doesn't matter you're a customer and they're a server, um, you need to treat people with respect. Um, and even more so if it's like a policy or something um, that is a restaurant policy, taking it out on someone who's just employed there is like not, like it doesn't really make sense, like it's okay to bring up issues and mention things or ask for things, but uh, not, you know, being like really targeted and thinking that this that particular server is out to get you. Like, no, they're not. They don't. They don't know you. They don't really care. Um, yeah. Well, I think overall my elementary school experience was a bit of that experience. Um, I moved to a neighborhood that was a little bit more affluent than the one I had grown up in, and that was a kind of a, a interesting change. Um, in that I've never experienced the experience of being looked down on in terms of socioeconomic status or income before. Um, this just happened to be a very materialistic school that I had moved to. And people would look down on people for something like wearing clothes from Old Navy. And like, I think Old Navy is perfectly acceptable, but it was considered cheap. It was all sorts of things. Um, for example, I come from a working, a double working parent household, and I was definitely looked down on that for that. I don't care because uh, my parents have taught me a lot of really great values. For example, um, the way they're ma they're able to manage such demanding jobs and still look after uh, me and my brother was they were really productive even during their breaks. So, like, yeah, like every every minute counts, every break counts. Um, and you know, that's, that's literally why, that's how I end up here right now on my break, doing dishes. Um, and like a lot of hard work and a lot of, also like a lot of skills that I would only have learned from their experiences being working parents. So, uh, whatever. But anyways, um, yeah, like being low down on that, which is interesting because I would say that's a very common, it's very common to have a double working house, but it wasn't in this, um, in this school. Um, in all fairness, my parents moved me here um, because the well, kitchen was supposed to be better, and it honestly was. Um, the school just had a lot more resources um, due to the money, and so we had things like band programs and like um, sports teams that I had no. There was there was none of that in that school that I went to. There was none of these opportunities to get involved in extracurriculars. Um, so yeah, like it's funny because I think if you're used to always having these like things like band programs and hot lunch programs like you think that every school has them no like actually like you have to realize like sometimes don't and then when you're for me coming from a place that doesn't have it and then you have it then you realize how grateful I am to have these things like hot lunch and stuff um yeah so that's my spiel I mean it gets going on the yeah, I was just like super I just was volunteering everywhere in my elementary school I also volunteered as a office assistant with some of my friends 
So during lunch when the secretary took a break, um, we were there, we would just man the first aid station and then we would um, also like answer phone calls that came in and take messages and stuff. And yeah, I mean, the thing for me is I realized I love first aid. I loved it. People came in with the scrapes, bumps, band-aids. I didn't know I wanted to do medicine at that point, but definitely that planted a seed in for me. Um, realizing that I really enjoy taking care of people, helping people that are hurt. And, um, yeah, I guess we got to sleep, but that was really nice. Thinking back, that probably was a bit of a seed. Anyways, um, yeah, again, I I would say another experience. This is this this is terrible. I hope this is not coming off as a rant, but I definitely had a parent. Uh, and I know who care this is, but come in and be really disrespectful towards the office staff. You have to remember, we're in like grade 7, so like, what are we, like 10, 12? Um, and so, we're pretty small at that point. Um, but we're not stupid. I definitely think anyone that teaches, I think people underestimate how much young people understand. Especially nowadays, with all the technology, everyone's very more knowledgeable than I was when I was 12. This mom had come in and she was just being super derogatory towards us. The kind of discrimination thing, kind of class thing. And so I am not, I was definitely not pleased with that. That was not okay. Like, you know, I don't like, I don't think it's that particular person's problem. I think it's more of a bigger societal problem of uh, class and money being valued more than it should be. One of my grad years was like a bit of a scandal. Again, uh, basically there was a incident in which there was a theft. There was a theft and some people were wrongly accused. And they actually like they had to go through severe consequences for something they didn't do. And there was another case where there was a, someone of a particular race and um, of a very affluent family, a very famous, influential family had accused someone who was totally innocent of uh, doing something. And that, that thing had not happened, that, that person was totally innocent, but um, no one listened to the story. And yeah, so he had to, he was basically punished for something and um, yeah, it was just kind of a, kind of a mess. Um, and so I, yeah, I didn't really think that was a really interesting good time. I, I think I don't really think about elementary school because that's a really, really long time ago for me. But recently I was watching Temperature of Love with my friends and Julia, and it was basically bullying in the back of the school year times and so I just thought of these kind of things um, where people were yeah being young is an interesting time to pick on each other unnecessarily um, so if you're watching and you're still in school that's not okay stand up for yourself if you can um, seek help if you can and try not to kind of pass continue this, that behavior because it kind of doesn't make you feel good. Anyways. Anyways, but this is kind of why I'm in this line of work of medicine, is that I love, 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 love the fact that um, the work I do doesn't discriminate by class. Well, you know, I'm sure there's like some instances of function stuff where that doesn't apply, but generally that if my principle is that I want to, um, if I want to, and just treat without discrimination, I can. Um, I have that agency to do so, and like our principles and our values of medicine is to treat people equally and without discrimination. So, as opposed to some other fields where, um, for example, profit or something else is the focus, medicine is more of the focus, and I really like that. And some of this, the work I do outside of school is really focused on empowering and giving opportunities to the people who don't have a chance or don't have low income, and I'm really, really passionate about that kind of of work and so um, hopefully I can do more of that going forward in my career if I have more knowledge and more experience and more things to be able to offer people um, but yeah so that was my story time while I washed all the dishes so let's go 
go back to my room and do some more work.